Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and today we are looking at Shockwave Totem. It's a build I have wanted to try uh, for quite a while now. I've done plenty of totem builds, and uh, I've been aware that Shockwave Totem with Astral Projector has been something that's kind of decent for at least a couple of years or some shit, and I just have been avoiding it because I've been constantly, if I do totem builds, doing some other funkier, wackier shit. Uh, so only finally now getting around to it because of uh, a certain viewer that keeps pestering me for it since it's one of his favorites and uh, finally getting around to it and it's pretty damn good so shockwave totem as far as I can tell with an astral projector is pretty high up there on totem um, scaling grading I don't know I was gonna say it's basically like an S tier totem I think there are a few totem builds that I think it typically stand out from the rest and uh, in general I've been a bit out of love with totem gameplay in the past year or so feels like the game just kind of sped up a bit too much and having to stop stand still and place your totems before moving forward it was just a bit tedious and uh, didn't feel as fluid as other builds but shockwave totem with um, Astral Projector means that instead of pulsing around the totem itself, the little shockwaves, it then targets its shockwaves at whatever enemies there are. It's a pretty smart targeting system and it's got a long range. On top of that, it's got some pretty good DPS um, potential and it ends up being a fairly fucking fast, clearer and satisfying build to play. Uh, as you can tell from the current mapping gameplay and all that, you just play some totems and then they'll just target everything on screen for you. We've got six totems and you get lots of cast speed and with that combo you then have um, some very powerful screen clearing action. And uh, I think there are several different ways to build it. I was actually really indecisive about how I was going to do it. It's either like or for me it was either going to be full cold without leadership's price so just pure freezing and stuff or it was going to be full cold with leadership's price so instead of freezing we're using alt ailments or it was going to be Doriani's prototype full lightning conversion I think there's going to be other options as well like you can probably go full fizz or full fizz poison sort of thing a um, few other things probably as well uh, full fire, you can do that too. There's a lot, it's pretty flexible since it starts out as a completely um, fizz base and on top of that it doesn't have a huge amount of damage so adding any flat damage um, at a hundred percent rate seems pretty decent as well. So you can go battle mage, all kinds of crap. Shockwave totem, just basically want to you know highlight to you that with astral projector is a fairly clean um, totem setup and then ultimately it can be a very nice end gaming build because uh, totems have always been rather high tier for bossing when you just place a couple of totems and then run around as they take care of business for you and this type of um, totem in particular is going to be doing that very well because it doesn't really miss there's no like um, travel time there's no projectiles to all sync up basically if the totem goes down and it's within range of an enemy it's going to be throwing out that hit and it's going to be landing so it's pretty true deep uh, dps when it comes to your um pob dps and all of that it's just going to be up to rotational buffs and that sort of thing so yeah shockwave totem definitely um one you can look into if you want to do some totem gameplay uh it's not too expensive either and this perspective here is for a hierophant so you're going for additional totems totem placement speed and a few other quality of life pieces i think you can do some other things but having a really good totem placement speed um goes a very long way to having an enjoyable mapping totem setup uh so far, basically, just speed run to level 90 while fixing up and deciding how to scale the build. Uh, just done a couple little bosses that you're seeing here, and then hopefully take on some end game in the next stream. But for now, let me go ahead and show you how I've built the character. So here's the current character, level 89. This build made me quit PoE. Um, I was going in with a pretty negative mindset around the build. Uh, and you know Diablo was about to start so I figured maybe I'd lean into that sort of meme but it's been anything but um, disappointing it's been a pretty damn enjoyable build so far and um, Shockwave Totem itself 
has been very clean. It is largely thanks to Astral Projector. Um, I mean, it's been around for a while and it's a pretty cheap item, especially when it doesn't have much attention drawn to it. Uh, but it does mean that certain skills get quite a bit more um, fluid once you can use it. And Shockwave Totem is definitely one of those things. So it otherwise just creates a totem and pulses around it. Whereas with this, it means that it targets enemies smartly wherever they are. So currently I'm a uh, Herophant building the character around a uh, cold conversion, as you can see with the Divergent Shockwave Totem. Uh, I'm well, actually, I'm not even sure if I'm overcapped at this point. I think I'm about 100% conversion. Uh, it's not super important getting 100% conversion. So for most of this character's life, I was using um, Anomalous Shockwave Totem, which is just car speed, placement speed. Um, and then I grabbed one of these very recently to try and cap out the uh, convert. Like I said, they, I think you can go many other different routes with Shockwave Totem if you really want. Uh, this one is a cold convert and I went with a leadership's price. And um, I'm also trying to stack fire res so that uh, I can sustain RF. I wasn't too sure if leadership's price was going to happen. Uh, I only just swapped into it like a couple of levels ago maybe. Um, up until that point, I was just a regular freeze build, and it feels really good having freeze on your shockwaves because um, you place them and then they just like freeze the whole screen essentially and keep uh, bosses frozen and stuff. So it felt really good doing that, but I wanted to kind of commit to this um, balance of stats to try and get um, conflux of brittle and uh, scorch in particular but i think just the full cold version works perfectly fine too and i think the highest output's probably potentially doriani's prototype and i was contemplating doing that but i wanted a bit more of a smooth character to play so i just went with this uh this amulet means that you have to balance two stats at their highest values so balancing strength and it's what i did it takes a little bit of work you know with the right gear so in the end this was the deciding item that needed to get 19 quality but had to get the exact right sort of values of strength and int across the board without doing anything too uh drastic and then it means that you have conflux of those um things so all of my damage in this case, all of my cold damage is going to apply Brittle, it's going to apply Sap, and it's going to apply Scorch, as if it's uh, its parent element, so at full values. That's the strength of um, Leadership's price compared to Secrets of Suffering. If I had Secrets of Suffering with full cold, I'd only be doing um, really good Brittle and nothing else. So that's the whole point about that. Uh, it's a very strong amulet, a bit tough to make work sometimes, but very, very strong indeed. Uh, so I've also got plenty of max fire res at the moment. At the moment, 86. I can go a bit higher, uh, you know, maybe like 88 if I really went all out. Uh, but sustaining RF is not too hard in a build like this. You just get some um, life regen, get some fire res, and then we're using RF. And that is purely for the spell damage buff it gives, if you're unaware. Uh, it gives 39% more spell damage, so we're not using it for the burn or anything. Uh, so it's pretty good stuff. Um, otherwise, we're just stacking some auras, so Hatred, Zealotry, um, Purity Fire, using Vitality, and also on um, Divine Blessing, uh, Haste at the moment. You can go a lot more defensive if you really want. I've barely got any defenses on this one at the moment, um, except for a pile of regen, simply because the build doesn't feel like it needs it. Like, I basically never die. I think I've died maybe once so far, uh, just mapping or some shit. Uh, in general, you just place your totems, they annihilate the entire screen, and then you run around doing whatever you want. Um, but you can definitely go much more defensive in this if you really want. Uh, it's pretty easy to do. Just grab some determination, a bit more life. Um, you'd get a little bit less DPS. It's really not going to be too big of an issue. Um, but it's it's a totem playstyle, so it doesn't feel like it needs to be more defensive anyway. Uh, this chest I'm just reusing from a previous character, just a hybrid chest. We do solve mana with Eldritch Battery, as always, um, even though you can actually sustain off a of mana like this, but why not just reserve and um, go all out with um, auras and shit. So we're grabbing all of these, uh, not taking anything from other passive trees, uh, other ascendancies, I mean. And um, the only other interesting thing is a Militant Faith, so Dominus. Uh, just to give us inner conviction um, and then also just a medium cluster that 
does onslaught placement speed and just some aura effect on this little node here with a couple of little aura reserve things so you've got this aura reserve here here and also yoinking um charisma and that lets me pretty much put all of that in and as well as that the vitality um thing too and then also using skitterbots so that we still chill and shock the enemies um where are they so we still chill and shock uh, so that a bit more damage and also um, hypothermia is working. The actual links here are Shockwave, Cold Pen, Awaken version for cold exposure, um, Crit Damage, Area, Multi Totem, and Hypothermia. I was running Crit Strikes and Faster Casting for a long time, just until I sorted out all the crit and everything. Uh, so, yeah, that's kind of the links at this point, though. Uh, then using car speed ring from before devouring diadem uh with the auras and uh, a level three enlighten uh made this shield just by shit i don't even remember at this point probably chaos spamming until i got um life and totem and then locked the prefixes and uh just finished the suffixes with a veil so yeah it was pretty simple nothing too amazing fairly reliable um recreatable thing using immortal flesh just for a fuck ton of life regen a uh, bit of extra armor and stuff but a huge amount of life regen so that it can help sustain rf uh so if i don't have rf on yeah i've got a lot of regen at the moment what is it 1300 uh which is like 25 percent of my life or some shit uh so you know you can choose to not play with rf sometimes if you really need to uh we've then also got gloves that um, just have focus car speed thing bought these and then just crafted something on top of them uh and other than that um i haven't quite finished the uh eldritch thing there so freeze prolif won't do anything there. i'll put unnerved there instead um and then a wand i had a um fracture ready to use so i grabbed a wand and used um some essences until i got car speed and a plus one fizz and then there was only four stats on there i fractured and it happened to hit the car speed so then i just used essences of spell damage afterwards uh, until some good shit happened uh basically i was just chasing uh plus one all fizz at that point and once i got that there's no other real good prefix so it doesn't matter that we got fire there uh then locked prefix unveiled with focus double damage and there's our wand um that's about it for the character's gear, I suppose. Uh, running Taste of Hate, some crit and stuff, nothing too special there. And uh, Passive Tree doesn't really need anything else. Jewels are pretty mediocre for us for this type of a build, so I just got some Fizz to spells here. I might try and change it to something else. Um, and then a Watcher's Eye that does Hatred Cold Pen and a bit of Zealot Tree Cast Speed. Uh, but the passive tree isn't even that good, I don't think. It's kind of still maybe a bit flexible. We could change this. We could go different directions. You could do impossible escapes and pick up other good shit. Uh, like I said, you could not be full cold. You can go full fire. Uh, you can go full lightning. You can go a poison setup. I think it's pretty flexible and definitely some ideas out there that uh should yield better results than this even though i think this is going to be a pretty good character in the end um we're talking maybe 20 million dps at the moment fairly reliable and the kind where you know you can just place totems and run around so we'll see how it goes in the end game but for now that's the build uh i hope you guys enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching see you next time